Hey everybody, Ms. Bodishon here. We're going to start with our AKS portfolio on energy. We're only going to be addressing 7A today. So 7A says, I can construct explanations for energy transformation within a system, a closed or an open, including chemical, mechanical, potential, or kinetic, uh, electromagnetic, light, sound, thermal, electrical, and nuclear energies. And I know that sounds like a whole lot, but I promise we're going to break this down and make it easy for you. So follow along on your portfolio and make sure you're getting all the right answers. You're going to see this on there, define potential and kinetic energy and give an example of each. So let's go ahead and talk about what they are. Potential energy is energy of position or energy in storage. So there's three different types of potential energy. The first one is elastic. The elastic example is this balloon. Balloon is made out of like a rubber latex material. When you blow it up, it expands. That expanding is what makes it potential energy or elasticity. All right. Um, another one is um, gravitational potential. And that example is this one right here with a ball being held like over the top of a little cliff here or like a little wall. So if we were to drop the ball, it would fall due to gravity. So this is gravitational potential. And the third type is chemical potential, which is where we get our storage. Okay. So energy that's being stored for later use, for example, in the form of a battery, in the form of um, coal that we're going to burn later, in the form of um, like food energy that we can convert in our bodies, right? Or in or our energy that we use, um, that is going to be chemical potential energy. Now, on the other hand, there's kinetic energy, which is energy of motion. So anything that's moving around, I just want you to think of kinetic energy, kind of like um, way back in the day, the old Xboxes had um, the Kinect. It was Kinect because you had to move. You were the controller, right? Uh, so if you look at our examples, we had our balloon blown up, which was a lot of potential energy. And then if we let the little tie go, all of that potential energy will be transformed into kinetic energy as soon as the air starts whooshing out. It's in motion, right? It starts whooshing out and our balloon goes flying. Okay, so it's transferred into kinetic energy. On this side over here, let me move me so you guys can see me. So if you look over here, the ball is held really high up for our potential energy. As soon as we let that ball go, we just drop it, okay? And it's going to start transferring all that potential energy into kinetic energy as it's falling downward, all right? Move me back. So the next one, you're going to see the roller coaster. It says at each point in the roller coaster, tell if it is potential or kinetic energy or changing from one to another and explain the uh, transformation process. So transformation process is just how it's switching from one energy to the next. All right. So I have given you guys this and I'm going to put me right here so you can see the whole thing at one time. You can see that our roller coaster starts over here. And as it goes and climbs up the roller coaster, we are gaining potential energy. Okay. At the very top of a roller coaster, this is like a hundred percent potential and zero percent kinetic. All right. At the very, very tippy top of the roller coaster. As soon as we start to go down the roller coaster, we are now transforming or converting that potential energy into kinetic energy. And we're going to get faster and faster as we go. So at the very bottom, we are 100% kinetic energy and 0% potential energy. We've lost all of our height, right? So all of that gravitational energy has now been converted into kinetic energy. Uh, so it's going to go again because we just, we've had a lot of momentum, right? We've gone really, really fast. So we have enough energy to continue on the next hill, but we're going to start converting that kinetic back into potential as we climb up the next hill. Okay. You can pause it here. You can read the descriptions and write it on your paper. All right. So this one is a table for you to learn all the different forms of energies. You're supposed to write down a description of each, an example of each, and is it potential or is it kinetic? 
So I'm going to go and I'm going to explain each one to you. And I just need you to fill this table out as I'm explaining. Okay. Let me move me. I'm just gonna, there we go. Move me over here. So I broke it down into what is potential and what is kinetic. So we're going to go from there. Okay. We're going to start with everything that's potential energy. All right. So chemical energy would be first in our chemical energy. Here's a little picture right here. Chemical energy is the energy stored in the bonds of atoms and molecules. Gasoline and a piece of pizza are examples of this. Okay, we already talked about chemical energy. That's going to be like your batteries and food and things like that. Okay, your charcoal. Nuclear energy is the energy stored in the nucleus of an atom, the energy that holds the nucleus together. The energy in the nucleus of a plutonium atom is an example, okay? And we're going to be talking a lot more about nuclear energy in the future. But for now, just know that nuclear energy occurs in the sun in the form of fusion and fission. And uh, it occurs on Earth um, in nuclear power plants, okay? Elastic energy we addressed for elastic potential. It's energy stored in objects by application of force. So compression springs a stretched out rubber band, a bow and arrow, anything like that are really good examples of elastic energy. Gravitational potential energy, we did already address. Um, that's gonna be energy of position, right? So the higher up something is, the more gravitational energy it's going to have. It says a child at the top of a slide is an example. Moving on to kinetic energy, radiant energy. Radiant energy is also known as light energy. It can also be known as electromagnetic energy. So it kind of has three names in one, but I need you to know all of those different names, okay? So it's electromagnetic energy that travels in transverse waves, light and x-rays are example. So it's pretty much any kind of light wave that you can think of, including regular light, like from the sun, okay? Thermal energy, which is just heat energy, all right? is uh, the internal energy in substances. It's the vibration of the movement of atoms and molecules in a substance. The heat from a fire is an example. So uh, a lot of people ask me, why is thermal energy kinetic? It's because it's literally the vibration of the molecules. It's the moving of those molecules that makes it kinetic. Motion. Motion is also known as um, mechanical. Okay, so it's right here. Mechanical energy is the movement of a substance from one place to another. Wind and moving waters are great examples of mechanical. Um, something I do want to mention, mechanical energy, notice it's here under kinetic, but it's also here under gravity, okay, under potential gravitational energy. And it's also here under elastic. So mechanical energy is the only form of energy that is both potential and kinetic. It just depends what kind you're talking about. All right. Sound energy is next. It's the movement of energy through substances in a longitudinal wave. Uh, it echoes um, music. Those are really good examples. Anything you hear, obviously, sound waves, right? So those molecules are again vibrating, which creates sound. Uh, electrical energy is the very last one. And you guys know a lot about electrical energy already. It's the movement of electrons, right? So lightning, um, electricity in your homes through the outlet, really good examples of electrical energy. Move myself, there we go. So um, this one, you're asked to construct energy transformation webs for these four things, and we're gonna go through them together. But before we do, let's go over the law of conservation of energy. All it states is energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. So we cannot create energy. We can't destroy it. It's just going to change from one type of energy into the next type of energy. So if I'm asking you to do a plant growing, uh, well, plants get their energy from the sun, right? Sunshine. So radiant energy, which is light energy comes from the sun and is transformed into chemical energy in a tree through photosynthesis. That's how a tree eats, right? Charging an iPhone. Um, here's a picture of an iPhone. It's being plugged into a laptop to charge. So electrical energy from the laptop, right? Being plugged in goes through and it goes to the battery and the battery is chemical energy. 
So it's going to be electrical to chemical, and then eventually when you use it, um, it's going to go back to electrical and whatever else you're doing with your iPhone, right? If it's sound to listen to music or whatever. All right, um, the eating the candy. If you eat candy, candy, first of all, is chemical energy, stored energy for us for later. And our bodies will store that energy through digestion in our fat cells. That's also chemical energy that we store in our bodies, right? We can use it to do things like jump rope and hopscotch, so mechanical energy. When that happens, we have to maintain our body temperature and we sweat and everything like that. So it reproduces a lot of thermal energy as well. Okay, um, the nuclear power plant, and it's kind of hard for you guys to see, so I'm just going to leave it right here. I'm going to go through this with you. You can pause this one and really look at it because there's a lot to this one. So nuclear energy starts right here um, through the uh, like splitting of atoms and putting together of atoms, fusion and fission. We'll talk more about that later. Okay. It's going to then travel right here to where it says number two to heat energy in the water. And then it's going to go and be converted into kinetic energy because it's changing into steam. And then it's going to go right here to number four. So this is kinetic energy, but in the form of turning a turbine. It's kind of like a really big fan. Okay. And once that fan is turned, that turbine is turned, it can turn into electrical energy that we store in a generator. And then we send out all that electrical energy that we've produced now and we place in generator through our power lines and bring it to our homes and schools. And this is a very condensed version, you guys. So if you have questions about this, don't hesitate to ask. It's no big deal. All right. But thank you. That was 7A.